Hello! Welcome to our video about moving monolithic applications to Red Hat OpenShift. My name is Ryan Goodson. I'm an application onboarding architect with financial services of Red Hat Consulting. And hey, I'm Justin Goldsmith. I'm a senior architect, also with Red Hat's financial services consulting group. Hello, Justin. Hey. I'm currently working with a client that is looking to move monolithic applications into their new Red Hat OpenShift environment. Uh, they're looking to take advantage of the speed of deployment and also the integration with CI/CD tools. Those are both really good reasons to move to OpenShift. Can you tell me a, a little bit about the applications? Sure. The first one is a pretty simple Tomcat application. It's stateless and it has a pretty simple database backend. Well, that's kind of always the easiest thing to move. Um, Tomcat applications running in OpenShift is, is usually really easy. Um, Red Hat provides a supported Tomcat image called JWS. Um, that comes with OpenShift out of the box. So moving an application from running in Tomcat out of OpenShift to into, into OpenShift is usually as easy as moving the code to running in, in that Tomcat container in OpenShift. Um, Red Hat has a process called source to image, which enables you to take your either your source code and have it build in the container in a builder image, or give it your binary using your existing CI CD tools and just give it that war jar file and it will put it in the container image for you and, and you can just run that in OpenShift. And we like to call that rehost. Um, because it's a like-for-like -like move. You're moving just Tomcat to support a Tomcat or JWS. Well, that sounds great, but uh, in their case, they're not really interested in moving to the uh, Red Hat Tomcat image. Uh, they want to be able to pull their own. Is that something that they can do here? Um, yeah, that's, that's also really easy. Um, Tomcat is, is pretty easy to get running in a container. Um, you can use build your own image from scratch in a Docker file, pull something from Docker Hub, as long as it's a supported image that you're willing to run. Um, and, and run that in OpenShift and just get your, your, your build process in CI CD to work with that image instead of the one that Red Hat provides. Um, you can also just run, um, if you're running a JBoss EAP application, um, you can also do this rehost strategy by just moving your, your JBoss EAP running outside of OpenShift to running inside of OpenShift. And there might be some little changes you have to make, like for example, logging. You don't want to log to a file in OpenShift, you want to log to the console so that it makes its way to the aggregated logging subsystem. Excellent. Uh, some of the other applications that they're looking to move uh, are based on uh, WebSphere or WebLogic, those legacy Java uh, middleware platforms. Uh, what, what are the strategies to, to make that move? Um, sure. Um, so we usually don't like to, to move WebSphere or WebLogic into OpenShift. Um, they work, but that process sometimes takes a little bit of time. Um, what we usually like to do is move the application first um, from WebSphere or WebLogic to run in JBoss EAP. Um, Red Hat provides a, a JBoss, a, an, an OpenShift native JBoss EAP image um, that's really easy to get to get running. Um, it uses the same source to image approach that we talked about with, Tom, with the supported Tomcat image, JWS, where you can provide it either your source code or a binary and, and run that in OpenShift. Um, to move from WebSphere or WebLogic into, into EAP, um, Red Hat has a tool called Red Hat Application Migration Toolkit. It will scan your source code um, or your binary and point out saying, hey, I, I noticed that you're using a, a WebSphere JMS library over here. That's not going to run in JBoss EAP. Why don't you switch? Switch it in those 20 places in your code where that is, and use to this move to the standard Java EE spec so that you can run it in JBoss or any other Java EE container. And again, we like to call this replatform because you're moving from one con one container like WebSphere to another JBoss EAP. If the application really isn't even using any J Java EE features, and you're just running it in JBoss EAP or WebSphere or WebLogic just because that's what your company does. Um, you can also move that into Tomcat or JWS uh, and get that working in OpenShift really easy too. And that's replatform because you're moving from Java EE to something like Tomcat. Excellent. Um, once they actually move to uh, the uh, OpenShift container platform, um, they were looking really looking to refactor into microservices. Cool. Um, yeah. Um, so we definitely recommend that. Um, you can start with either of these approaches, rehost or replatform, and then move them and or factor them into microservices. Um, and it, it's not too hard. And then you can start taking advantage of some of the, f the features of OpenShift that you know cloud native, twelve factor style apps can can leverage. Such as if you break it apart into ten services, you can deploy all ten of those services independently, scale them independently, so they're not reliant on each other anymore. One of the other things that they would like to do is look to move new new applications, greenfield applications, and develop them on this environment. 
that that's awesome. Um, when you're doing that, it's a little bit easier to start using things like Spring Boot or Vertex or some more cloud native um, runtimes and get them running in OpenShift. And again, like we said about the the refactor to multiple services, you can you can really start taking advantage of some of those features, especially when you're building it from scratch for OpenShift, like service discovery and and other aspects of the platform that you can leverage. Excellent. Uh, what are some of the other reasons why a team would want to move a monolithic application to OpenShift? Um, one of my favorite is the immutability of, of, of images. Once you build your image in your CI CD pipeline, you, that, never, that image never changes. It's the same image you deploy in dev as the image you deploy in QA, performance testing, and prod. Um, so there's no more, why is, is this working differently on my computer than in dev or in dev than in prod? The image is the same. The only thing that's changing is the configuration you're injecting. Another really cool story that I have is uh, I was working with a client and they were moving an in-memory cache application into OpenShift. And it was a vendor image, so it wasn't even it wasn't even theirs. In the current VM environment, it took them about 100 man hours to do that de deployment. Um, there was several people working in, in, at the same time on various steps that had to happen in some exact order. And that deployment took about two weeks before they were actually able to ever make an update or a change. Um, with OpenShift, we automated the, the whole CI-CD process for that, image, for, that, for that application, migrated it to working in a container, and we were able to now do a deployment in about 15 minutes. That is excellent. If you're interested in moving your monolithic applications to OpenShift, reach out to your account executive to start that conversation. You could also look, uh, go to redhat.com slash services to find out more about what Red Hat Consulting can do for you. Thank you. Thank you.